All right, so hello and welcome. Thank you very much for joining this talk. I'm very excited, it's so many of you. Uh, that's uh, really honoring for me. Uh, so let's start right away. What this talk will all be about. So if I ask anybody, what would you like to do at work? Of course, besides work. Everybody says, oh, I would like to innovate, right? So everybody wants to innovate. And that's all good because innovation is what you know, keeps the lead uh, of, of Acton in, uh, on the market. So uh, everybody wants to innovate, that's very good. Um, and you know, even, even the biggest companies like Microsoft and Google, of course, do innovation. And just for your information, they invest somewhere around 14, 13 to 15% of, uh, uh, of their revenue into, um, into research and development. So, what did our management decided to do? So, there was a decision um, at the end of last year that research and development is so crucial for Actum that we need to make it a strategic choice for Actum to go and do research and development. So, research and development is no longer a work that you need to do smuggled in your daily business or in the after hours. But it rather became something that we want to do as a first-class citizen at Acta. Right, so research and development, okay? So I wanted to start a little bit in the past, uh, in the 60s, where people were actually wearing carpets uh, instead of uh, regular clothes. And it was the time when uh, the uh, space race was going on, right? So President Kennedy, at the time, uh, set a pretty ambitious goal, because Americans wanted to beat Russians at the space race, and he said, you know, it was the early 60s, so he said, guys, we really need to get to the moon before the Russians, and you get 10 years, 10 years from zero to walking a person on the moon. And remember, this was the times where for lifting five megabytes, you needed to use a forklift, right? So uh, it wasn't very easy for, uh, for scientists and for people to take up on this, uh, on this huge endeavor. But finally, a bunch of guys started to do, uh, started to work on this very huge task, uh, and they actually put together the most monstrous, the most biggest um, uh, engine and machine that the, uh, that um, uh, humankind actually ever witnessed, and it was the Saturn V rocket. Now, Saturn V was built out of six million parts, and NASA's goal on fault tol tolerance was 99.9. .9. That meant that if this thing departed, 6,000 pieces could go wrong at any point in time, and this rocket should still work like a charm. So all of this wouldn't be possible at all without research and development. Throughout the space race, there were a few flights, including uh, the first walk on the moon, until it came to these three guys. Do you know who that is? No? No? Armstrong? Close enough, but it's not them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you who these, uh, these guys are. This is the Apollo 13 crew, right? Apollo 13, everybody knows Bruce Willis and so. So, <laughs> this is not Bruce Willis, this is the actual guys. And they were about to have the biggest party of their life, right? Just imagine three guys locked in a pretty small room, uh, you know, having a great party somewhere in space, until everything, everything in their mission actually got really pear-shaped, including a, a catastrophic failure of their carbon dioxide filtering system. Now, they were about to asphyxiate in this little, uh, in this uh, yeah, uh, little something that we can call um, a glorified can of sardines somewhere in space, if it wasn't for a bunch of guys uh, down on Earth bringing their, their heads and their uh, uh, thoughts together, working as a team, and coming up with a design that actually uh, could help these guys in space to filter all this carbon dioxide away and let them breathe again. So this was the actual design that was put together like in a hacking and very quick manner. And this is what it actually look, looked like on the spaceship itself. So it's all taped, 
you know, taped solutions are usually the best ones. So uh, in this case, really, it was the case, and it led the guys to safely land back on Earth. So research and development is key to find light in the most dreariest of situations. Uh, spanning from finding out how to, uh, how to ignite fire to something like filtering uh, air uh, in space in a glorified uh, sardines can. So, what about Actum? Are we then starting to build starships? No. Oh, we need to deal with something even more complex. Side That's board. software. Side <laughs> board. <Yes. laughs> so this is actually Apollo's 11 uh, command, uh, command module source code. It's available on GitHub. It's two and a half million lines of code. Feel free to download it and start your own uh, space mission. Uh, no, but uh, yet we are not going to the, to the moon. Yet we are, we are helping our clients in their conquest, right? Our clients are not conquering the moon, but they are trying to conquest some market share with what they do, right? Uh, so we want to help our customers in this endeavor. Uh, so we, we, don't, we don't colonize the moon, we don't colonize land, but we colonize new territories uh, and help our customers to raise their flag on the Mount Retail and settle their camp in, uh, in uh, Valley Financial Services. And to achieve that mission, we also need research and development. We also need to put our head, heads together and think about how we can move forward in our mission. And it's nice to see you all here, because we all have these heads here. And it's you. It's you. It's Actum. So uh, we have this very nice opportunity to start this mission, which is now official. Uh, we can work on it together. And we have also now a place where to do this. And I'm very, very excited to announce you that this place is called Actum Lab. So, Actum Lab is our new research and development uh, activity. So, now what is Actum Lab? Actum Lab is an initiative that makes us, as a company, move forward and stay on the edge by letting everybody contributing with their ideas and innovations. Think about it. You're a project. And you say, wouldn't it be great if we could do this better? Or, I wish I used that kind of approaches as they use in Airbnb, or Netflix, or Facebook, or LinkedIn, or even, gosh, there are so many possibilities out there. I think we could definitely use some of them in our daily work. So all of these are indicators that there is a little boffin Right? A little scientist inside every one of you that's curious and eager to know more, to do things better, and to bring all of this to practice. So, Actum Lab is the place where this little boffin of yours can actually realize himself, can live. And the main idea is that really this is open to everybody, with very little barriers to enter. So you don't you are not required to go to management saying, you know, guys, I have this idea, I would like these two days to, to work on it, and they will say, mm, so give me the business case, and uh, how, many, how many hours will you be working on it, and, and so on and so on. It's very difficult to persuade management to start something. But because we have a very smart and good management, management realized that we need to move, for, move forward much quicker. So, there will be options how you can start in a very quick manner just by letting the idea mature a little and then the effect of your research and development can be pretty much used by everybody. And this is what Actum Lab's mission is. So let's have a look at how it all works and fits together. We can say we have four stages in the Actum Lab. So first, is the idea. Ah, I have this idea. What should I do? It's very easy. Little entry barriers. You don't need to think about complicated stuff. How should I enter? Because it's really easy. You just need to answer four main questions. right? And those four main questions, which we also call four description points, because you are describing 
what you want to do is why this idea, right? So is it something that I've heard somewhere? Is it something that the competition is using? Is it something that a conference was about and I was really interested? Or why? You know? Then the second thing is the benefits for Actum. Of course, every research and development activity that we do at Actum should have a benefit for Actum. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Then, the steps to be performed within the research. Do you want to install something? Do you want to try something with a cloud? Do you want to put a new process in practice? Maybe a new wireframing prototype tool? Whatever. And then the fourth is the intended outcome of that research. So you already assume something like, well, I would like to see if my deployments of Sitecore or uh, the command module of NASA will be faster in Docker containers. So will it be faster? Is that an outcome that I'm expecting? Yes. Okay. Let's see if it is faster. Or anything else. So once you get these four ideas, uh, four, uh, four description points together, and you clarify for yourself if this idea really makes sense to invest time into, then we should plan it. So you say, oh God, again, some planning, and Kanban and stuff. And you are right, Kanban is there. Uh, and you can actually all visit it. It's part of our Teams channel. The Teams channel is called Actum Lab and it's open for everybody. So uh, feel free to search for it. It's uh, open regarding the researches and the communication so you can read through it. But the planning is very important because we as Actum are growing. And if everybody did its own little research without the others knowing about it, we could end up doing three or four times the same research without pretty much you know, any additional value. So why don't we join forces and do the research together? Or maybe somebody wants to do a research, but then this research needs to fit in some, some sequence of other researches. So maybe let's start first by doing the basic research of, let's say, what is Cantico, right? This is a purely theoretical thing because we already know what is Cantico. But what is Cantico? And then, can we take Cantico and use it maybe in a headless regime, right? Or, you know, sequential or sequential uh, research and development that also needs to be planned. Once everything is planned, we know who's working uh, on what kind of research. If then anybody else wants to join, we can create a team. There's always a lead researcher. There can be a research team. It's not obliged to, of course, if you as the lead researcher are fine on your own. You can start the research. You can do uh, theories, formulation. You can do all the steps and additional steps. And you will find out lots and lots of interesting stuff. Throughout the research, you will find all the stuff, but if you keep it for yourself, then the research is not complete, right? Because what if I found a really nice method on how to store data or how to design something? Then I would like to share my, uh, my findings with the rest of the company so that the rest of the company knows, hey man, we have these really smart people doing this really interesting research and we can sell it, we can adopt it, or we also need to uh, take care of it somehow. <coughs> so once you find out the research made sense and Actum can benefit from it, you can start bringing in additional people like customer care or the relationship management or other people from Actum and explain them, hey, we have done this research and it would be really nice if you knew about it and we could you know, sell it to customers or stuff. And then also, as soon as the research finishes, you need to document it so that everybody can find it at a later stage and possibly try to do the research again, maybe because one of the outcomes was, you know, this technology is really interesting, but the outcome of the research is that it's not usable for Actum. And this is perfectly fine. Yeah, you just found out that the technology is premature or really badly supported or badly documented so if the whole company moved to this uh, technology or this process or, the, or this approach, it would be just money wasted. Instead, you have done the research, you know it 
and you can just tell the others. So maybe in two years the technology will mature, it will be there to be used by us, and why not? Let's return to it, let's try it again, let's see what went wrong originally, and let's see if the things changed. Right. So besides the teams, we have also an intranet page, which you can see is intranet slash actum lab. So feel free to go there, feel free to visit all the detailed descriptions and information. And if you have any questions regarding uh, the, uh, the Actum Lab and its workings, so feel free to just ask me or uh, yeah, let me know somehow and we can work on it together. What is the vision? The vision is that right now we have started already. We have started to uh, do some researches and I'm very, very excited to announce you that uh, one of the first researches that went through the Actum Lab is actually Tomáš's presentation just uh, after me about Sitecore Commerce. So uh, I invite you uh, very much to join the presentation and to see uh, what uh, Tomáš and the team and the research team actually performed, also with Tomáš Kneifel. So uh, we have first results, that's very good. Uh, yet the Actum Lab is here to help fostering innovation in Actum. So it's here to help get the ideas out of your heads for uh, the usage of everybody. It's here to help making good use of innovation. So it's not only a gimmick that we do innovation, but we actually innovate. And it's here to remove barriers to innovate. So to close this, I would like to say that it can be a small step for you, but it can be a huge leap for act and kind, right? <laughs> Thank you. So, do you have any questions? Go ahead. Uh, any other innovation ideas uh, that are ongoing? I, I haven't seen the page yet. Yes. So, I will, I will do this. I will show you what we actually have in the teams. Right, so this is our Actum Lab teams. You can see a general conversation. You can see the Sitecore Commerce conversation. And then you can see something called the Actum Lab Kanban. Mm -hmm. Here we organize all of the research activities, all of the ideas. So we have essentially three, or oh sorry, four stages. I have an idea, uh, ready to start, we are working on this, and done. Now when I have an idea, you just put, say, yeah, I really want to work on Sitecore integrations with Microsoft Azure, or automation of JS project infrastructure and deployments, or a chatbot, right? In order to put the idea, you can put it there, and then you can start working on those four description points. So let's say, that uh, Docker deployments, right? Let's open it up. We have four description points. Why this idea, benefits for Actum, steps to be performed, and intended outcome of the research. You see, it's not a huge document that you need to put together. It's just for clarification. Then, something called the Actum Lab work group, which is everybody who works on a research, say, sits together and says, okay, let's uh, review your idea, let's review your four points, yeah, it makes sense. Do, are we doing any uh, additional researches that might conflict or benefit or somehow have a relationship with this, uh, with this research? Yes, no. So let's plan it. If we are working on something, then let's put it here ready to start. And let's finish first what we are working, what needs to be done before. Or if not, and you're free, then go ahead, put it into, we are working on this, and start your work. Right? So as soon as you're done, move it in done, and hey presto, you're finished. So these are the actual data, this is the actual researches. Please, can you move the sidecore integration with Azure into VR working on this column? <laughs> <laughs> just for your beautiful eyes, I will just do this. Done. To the server. So, sorry. 
this is progress. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, may I have please another question? Absolutely. Uh, how would you be aligned with uh, delivery managers and project managers? When should I start and if I can't start, for example? Perfect question. So, <coughs> if it's something that's related to your work and you say, uh, I know that uh, David from QA, uh, I don't see him, uh, he's working on some testing automation and stuff like this. And this is related immediately to a project. So you can combine research and development with the project work. And in that case, it's planned work, it's paid work, so everything is fine and you just need to invest a little extra time you know, to make the outcome and to make it available. And why not, as Tomás, prepare for Friday Academy? If it's not something that's immediately related to your work, but it can benefit, or the work can benefit from it, like you are now doing a task that takes you 10 hours, typically, and after you've done some research and development on how to make this quicker and more effective, you can get to 8 hours or 7 hours, something like this. So you will think about this and say, hmm, so if I now invest uh, a day or two days or five days into doing this uh, research, next month I will be benefiting from this research. And at that moment you can say to the team lead and to the project manager of the project you're working on, and this project manager has you allocated, that, you know, hey man, I have found out a way how we could really uh, make this time shorter, but I would need to concentrate on it to finish it and to put it into practice. Would you allow me to spend a few days on it, uh, you know, uh, beside the project? And they will say yes, no, depending on the situation. Uh, but usually, you could also think about having uh, a few days, a few hours, and especially if, if it's a short, uh, short kind of project, you can uh, divide it into a few days of uh, an hour or two hour work. So the impact on your daily project should be minor. Right? But it really depends on the size and on how you organize. Nevertheless, if you want to be allocated on a research and development project, you need to do allocation with Sharka, and you definitely need to align with the team lead and the project manager if there's any uh, at the moment. Thanks. We have internal problems. Yeah. Yes, so I didn't mention it in the vision, uh, but the vision also is that all internal research and development projects will be organized under the Actum Lab. So we are now starting, you know, putting everything together, but ultimately Actum Lab will be our research and development facility, you can say, right? Um, with all the uh, all the outcomes, all the maturation of the ideas and everything, all the process that the Actum Lab tries to uh, help you with. So you're trying to move everything there? I mean, yes. Already started. One of the next steps is that we will be moving existing projects under the Actum Lab and all the new projects will be under the Actum Lab. Um, we will have a talk with management about the size of overall investment we want to do in, in research and development at Actum so that we have a clear idea how big the investment is, what it should bring us and where it should uh, move us. I have a question regarding the second step of the process, uh, on board, uh, work group, uh, love, love work group. Yeah. Uh, so let's say I have a project and I need some more people uh, to help me with that. So how do I get the people? Can I choose who can uh, cooperate on my project or...? Yeah. So there is this Active Lab work group, as I mentioned. And the Active Lab work group will help you if you don't know maybe the right person. Or maybe you say, you know, I want this guy because he's experienced with whatever uh, and I need him in the team. So again, if it's a small research and development, again, in like little units of mandates, you just need to align so that everybody is fine and nobody has problems. <coughs> if it's something bigger, like say, uh, hypothetically, we want to adopt a new CMS system or a new CRM system, this is no few mandates work. This is a team 
or commerce uh, site called commerce. Uh, this, is, this requires a team that is dedicated on this research and development, and this then needs to be organized uh, with uh, management. And again, the Actum Lab work group will help you with that. Any last question? <laughs> Very well. All right. So if there are no yeah, other questions, one more question. Yeah. Uh, uh, the last question: If this is going to be somehow like officially communicated across the whole company, because I'm sh pretty sure that there's a lot of people who really don't know that something like this is happening, uh, that might actually contribute to some of the topics that are already there in the, in the teams. Yes. So. The official communication starts today, so this is the yeah, kickoff. There, there's like a lot of people not being present here. I know. Uh, so the official uh, official uh, communication to the public is today. Uh, we are preparing with some of our UX colleagues um, a communication concept. So uh, it will be visible on posters and on communications across the company. And we, will, we want to make sure that uh, even new people coming to the company are aware of the initiative. Also, it's visible on the intranet side, so it's already visible in the menu and uh, it's publicly findable in the Teams. But again, as I said, we want to make public communication like an onboarding campaign, almost, I can say. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much again. <laughs>